Judy Tayabji, thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going back to the federal election, but in a way that we haven't done it before. As you know, we've talked about social programs, jobs and taxes, lighthouse closures. Today, we're going to talk under the heading of politics about how weird this election is. And I want to share with you my feelings. I've been watching this election feeling more and more disquieted that all the things we've talked about, all the things that you keep phoning about and wanting to talk more about, are not getting covered in this campaign. Even the leaders' debate the other night seemed to be hopping around and, and varnishing over the things that really matter to us. So we've taken a clip from the leaders' debate, the English language leaders' debate. We have with us Mike Gagan and John Twig who are going to talk to us about their impressions. And you know, if you're feeling angry as I am, now's the time for us to get this out. Let's talk about it. First, let's take a look at this clip. I'm asking you, Mr. Christian, will you accept a yes vote in the next referendum, like we're accepting the results of last referendum, because we're still in Canada. If there's a yes vote, will you accept the results? What would be the question, sir? The question will is it be a, a, another, drink, a, a, another a lobster trap like the one you. that was described last week in Quebec? Or will it be an honest, clear question? It was an honest, clear question. No, because you said to the Quebecers, let's have a partnership. And you said That's we will it. negotiate a partnership when in your mind you wanted just to proclaim independence. Uh, talk I, about solving the back? problem. Can we come back? Let's talk about the problem. Can we come back to the initial question? Yes. And this is the wrangling we hear among Quebec politicians every day of our lives in the House. But let's come back Nobody's to the original question. Nobody's become more embroiled in this than the referendum. Nobody's become more embroiled in the constitutional wrangling than the referendum. In the referendum, you told Canadians not to worry. I went to see you 16 months before that referendum. I was worried sick. I thought you, the way you fight a dream is with another dream, not with administrative tinkering. And you told me, as you told the public, I give you credit, you said the same in private as you did public. There was nothing to worry about. All we had to do was manage the Federation a little better and communicate a little better and things would work out fine. And you almost blew it, sir. Now the question is, if you do that again, you will really blow it, and you do not deserve a second chance unless you, know, you have if, a fresh no, but, vision. But, but, but don't be you're, mistaken. You're, Even though Mr. Mr. Giuseppe tonight doesn't like the word distinct society, is anyone mistaken that he's actually ever supported it or that he ever will in the future? His goal is quite clear. It's to separate the country. We know that. Let's reach out to the majority of people in Quebec, and I'm sorry to inform you of this, Mr. Giuseppe, including the majority of people who speak French, who want this country to work and succeed. And the biggest challenge I've set for myself is to connect them with other Canadians so that they can go forward together. You're coming and I back have news for you. I intend to make this country work. Because if there's one commitment I've made to my children is that I'm going to pass on to them the country I've received from my parents. And I'm determined to make that happen. You're coming back with a Charlottetown agreement. Respect, in all due respect. And I would like, and I would like to I'm, say at this moment... I'm sorry, but time... I, I, I'm sorry to say, but the agreed-upon time limit has run out. What they really needed in that debate were a whole bunch of little babies they could kiss and they could have a competition about who was kissing them best. Anyway, we'll be back after a quick break with your calls. How do you feel about this election campaign? Do you really think that we're going in the right direction? Back after a quick break. Tayabshi is brought to you in part by CFAX 1070, Victoria's news authority. A window of opportunity is being opened by the craftsmanship of Macmillan Bloedel. Using the latest technology, we're maximizing the use of exquisite fine grain lumber for high quality tilt and turn windows and doors. Even waste wood is recycled on site for heating and drying window and door components. The final result is superb workmanship, innovative design and a breath of fresh air for Canada's economy. Macmillan Bloedel, making the most of a renewable resource. This man is having a dream. He has gone to work without clothes on, which means he doesn't have his visa card. <laughs> No. 
No. This dust has bothered me for years. I want revenge. Dust sufferers everywhere are discovering Reactin. Yes. All right, dust. It's payback time. Reactin. Now available without a prescription in 5 and 10 milligram strengths. Uh, you missed a spot. Yeah. Morning. I think I'm ready for a commitment. Oh. Commit to the four-door RAV4 lease for just $2.97 a month. But only if the offer's attractive. Ring up Red Tag Savings. Lease a Tacoma 4x4 extra cab, $3.64 a month. But we better hurry. The clock is ticking. Hurry. The Red Tag sales event ends soon at your Toyota BC dealers. So? Dark teal or radiant red? When we launched this show in February, we started off focusing on issues that were important to you. We've covered fisheries, aquaculture, agriculture, taxation, the Canada Pension Plan, the employment insurance premiums, pedophile laws strengthening the criminal code, the new divorce act, aboriginal issues, the environment, including ozone protection special legislation, education cuts because of federal downloading, herbal medicine restrictions, health cuts because of federal downloading, trafficking in women because of the criminal code and the way we structure justice, western alienation, mining, and jobs, to name just a few of the things we've covered. How much are you hearing about these things in the election campaign? <laughs> It's a very impressive list. <laughs> That's what we've covered. That's only, I mean, we haven't even done this every day. You know, yeah. we've done some other things that are a bit fun. Yeah, I, you know, I was uh, amused. Uh, coming here this morning, I had a good night's sleep, but I was angry. And I found that you had the same kind of mood. When I got here, I, yeah. w There's something happened in that debate that was wrong. And I think, uh, frankly, Rafe Mayer had it right when he was angry at the, the, the milk toast questions from the hand-picked panel and the audience. It was uh, all uh, polished and stuff. By the way, know. we're joined by John Twig of Eagle Tree Publications, Mike Gagan of Political Strategies Incorporated. Thanks but for you guys coming keep, back. You guys keep talking about the issues, and this is about style. I mean, oh. let's debate the style. Hey, you look the be best voting for charade. <laughs> well, no, but I think you won the style uh, the points there. You know, if we elect one more federal government based on rhetoric, that's it. I'm moving to the Queen Charlotte's. So we'll declare independence up there they'll have me you yeah. know I mean really that I'm sorry I, I'm gonna yeah. I watched That's, the whole every single minute of that debate I don't think Sheree won uh, you well, know I, I find it interesting that BC seems to be out of step with the rest of the country I think frankly most BC voters have got it figured out that this central Canada Canada hegemony has got to be stopped when you say hegemony what do you mean well the the establishment media the establishment finance yeah. uh, you know the you look for debate coverage central... it's all a bunch of guys in Toronto yeah, yeah. They're, you know, white okay. guys in suits, as they say sometimes. Okay. Okay. That's what I and, usually but say. But the problem is, is when we vote reform, it gets ignored. Well, and, and, well and you maybe if we had more reform, reform. It's been a very ineffectual opposition in Ottawa. Well, they, they haven't been, been the opposition. A few but more, and they will be. Reform well. would say, and I'm still an undecided voter, but they would say that's because they keep getting covered by the central Canadian media who like the status quo. Yeah, and they trust the, the them NDP every chance has, they get. And the NDP has never elected as many MPs as the reformers that, uh, uh, did in the last election and have done uh, historically a far more effective job in terms of opposing the government of the day, bringing issues forward, getting their agenda on the table, actually getting policies adopted but by this McDonough country. Alexa McDonough seems so negative. And I, I'd listen to her. I mean, well, I she's think focusing she made in some on jobs, and we've points. got a very high unemployment rate in this country. So, uh, yeah. and she's also trying to do, and I think she's succeeding in this, in, in in distancing herself from her predecessor, who unfortunately has a very similar name to her, right. and showing that yes, she is a very capable and competent leader, and deserves to be in the House of Commons with uh, party status. She clearly Sounds showed. Like, sorry, she clearly showed she'd be a good opposition leader. But I still think Sheree did the best in the debate. No Sounds way. Like you've made up your mind, eh? Yeah. Well. I think, last, you know what? Last, I, last shows you were undecided. That's yeah. right. I have to say, I, I think Preston Manning won the debate hands down. He was the only one who talked about issues, but I'm a policy nerd. So I, he talked about policy, I think that's it. And he's a nerd, so I think it fits well. It's the nerd, nerd <laughs> thing. Yeah, that's right. Last minute before we go to the calls? Uh, let's take the calls. Okay, let's start with Henry in Chilliwack. Hi, Henry. Hi, Judy. How are you doing? Not too bad. Yeah, go ahead. I was very annoyed at the uh, debate that the... the main issue that I think should be front and center in the campaign was the multilateral agreement on investment. I, I and it hasn't even been mentioned, has it? No, it hasn't. Why don't you tell us what you think of it? Well, I think it just puts uh, our whole uh, democracy in jeopardy. Uh, yeah. what, once uh, this agreement goes through, the big business uh, will have 
all, the agenda, and yeah. that, whatever government gets in will have nothing to say. I think that's a, an, an outstanding point, and Henry, that's why sometimes I think that it's like there's a sandcastle competition on the beach with the leaders, and they're all fighting who was the best sandcastle, yeah. and the tsunami wave is right behind them. Yeah, I think that touches on what to me, and I think to many British Columbians anyway, is the key issue, and that's to get some deregulation and tax reform, structural reform of how the economy works and how the government tries to manage the business climate but let's go to, to the get that happening and nobody well exactly that's one of the problems I and mean, they're, they're going to foist this thing upon us it's going to put more rigidities into the system when we need more flexibility so when you say that what's your understanding if you could just in a nutshell what is the multilateral agreement on investments it we're going to do a show on it well, next week but <laughs> <laughs> reading from all the work that Gordon Wilson has done on it uh, hey, I it, like him yeah he's uh, he seems to have <laughs> things figured out <laughs> yeah right uh, uh, it's going to gonna put international now. rules on the flow of capital and business so that uh, if we, for example, wanted to put BC content in, say, the BC forest industry, the multilateral agreement on investments would come along and say, no, it has to be an equal playing field. Okay. Well, the irony what? is we've had two federal governments in a row that have uh, moved ahead in terms of opening up ca Canada in terms of uh, global trade and whatnot, and, is, and have done very little, if anything, in terms of reducing interprovincial trade barriers. Isn't that ironic? So, so, so it's easier is it for a business in Washington State to, do, uh, to, to deal with Canada across the country than it is for a company in British Columbia. Yeah, So that's, and that's crazy. And the multilateral agreement investment takes the powers away from government. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that gives it to the corporations. Let's talk to Bill now in Oyster Bay. Hi, Bill. Hi, Judy. Wonderful program. Oh, you should thanks. be right across the country so the <laughs> Easters can hear you. Well, we can shake them up out there, eh? And yeah. an hour. Really, uh, Robert Service said uh, a promise made the debt unpaid, and uh, I'm afraid that the, uh, the debate proved continually that uh, John Crichon is a liar, and nobody seems to pick up on that in the East. They think he did real good. I, I think that's interesting, Bill. I think you've raised an excellent point. I, I found that over and over again they said, here's your Red Book promise. You didn't fulfill it. And in B.C., uh, we've seen our own Premier being beaten about the head, being called a liar, um, just for one issue with the budget where he was trying to have his own comeback. Chrétien, I mean, if he were not the incumbent, he was so weak, there were so many things he promised and he didn't give us a good reason for not delivering And on. plus, I think he uh, uh, made your faux pas in terms of insensitivity when, uh, during the debate, one of the questioners asked about, uh, you know, funding cuts to programs affecting uh, children in poverty, and he said, oh, well, we had to, our first job was to get the, uh, the deficit down, and uh, that wasn't very sensitive. Yeah, and nice for the kids. Yeah. We'll be there when you're 12. Yeah, maybe they'll get some Briex shares as a reward. Oh, man, sounds like the brick thing. Okay, let's talk to Zelly in Surrey now. Hi, Zelly. Hi. How are you doing? Oh, good, good. Uh, the only thing is, like I've noticed, you know, like this whole election question, mm -hmm. um, they don't really do anything except argue and, and argue points, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Everybody agrees job creation, of course, is, is very important to the Canadian people. Right. And I just wonder why they haven't gone to the Canadian people. We basically have all the natural resources in Canada, right. and we are not taking advantage of them. Right. Why couldn't they come to the Canadian people and go town to town asking, what jobs could you create in this town if you had the money to do so? Right, and then, and then allocate the resources like that. Exactly. Well, that's an excellent... Yeah, John, I was going to go to you anyway. Thank Put you very much. Hand. I yeah. want to on this one. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing, if you can answer that question, and also I noticed uh, one thing that Manning did both in the English and the French debates is he said to the pr Prime Minister over and over, tell us how you create one job. And we couldn't get an answer on that. Yeah. Uh, the caller makes the point about if, they, if we would ask the people, what would they say? I think one of the first things the people would say is the banking rules mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the money to create jobs, the credit to create jobs. Nobody's talking about this kind of stuff. There's all sorts Except of things. Except for the Canadian Action Party. Well, yes. Yeah. There's, there's many, many things that could be done to create jobs. You know, uh, there's a thing in the forest industry in BC right now about uh, where's the billion dollars that Forest Renewal BC has to spend. Where's it going to be? It's offshore right now. Well, yeah, but the thing is, the unions are saying, "Hey, we want union-only jobs." Right. On the other hand, we could have thousands of entry-level non-union jobs that could perhaps, with time, grow into union jobs. We could create many, many more jobs than we are. So what you're are. saying is the, the, the opportunities are there. We're just yeah. not doing We're not it. Talking as, about as a former uh, ministerial assistant in small business, I can tell you one of the most frustrating things is uh, is for small business people starting out is getting access to credit. You the, kept yeah. seeing the application. Uh, and, yeah. and, uh, 
Um, in fact, one interesting thing is the Federal uh, Business Development Bank used to make a profit on businesses in British Columbia, so much so that it covered all their losses in the rest of the country. The major banks have How's been... How's that? What's that? When they, when, when they loan money, yeah. they, the, the recovery rate, rate from British Columbia was so good that they made yeah. a profit, which covered all their losses on bad loans in the rest of the country. Oh, that's right. and yeah. the, the, Don't go there, Mike. Well, but the, <laughs> the point is, is that the, uh, one of the things that has choked off job creation in this country is that we've had fi um, the five major banks, you know, ra raking in record uh, billion, multi-billion dollar profits right. and not using any of that money to finance job creation and economic growth in this country. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's go back to the phones. Let's talk to Paul in Victoria. Hi, Paul. Hi, Judy. Go ahead. I just want to say I absolutely love your show. I okay. watch it religiously. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> The image is very important in elections, and personally, I think that Jean Chrétien needs a haircut. Uh, Jean Charest, as we know, has, al has always had cool hair, and Preston right. Manning recently had a great makeover. So, right, right. Uh, so maybe it's about time that Jean Chrétien got a got, <laughs> got a, good a hair haircut. Too. Yeah. Thank you for that, Paul. And I hope our show is giving you more to think about than just haircuts. But, you know, uh, image, it's interesting. There's a provincial politician, I won't say who it is, but it's not my husband, who said that 80% uh, of how people judge you is by appearance. And I guess that's one of the things in Manning's makeover. Um, do you guys think that a change in image would affect Chrétien? I think both... Charest has actually flattened the, oh, the do lately. And, well, my and personal view is that uh, Jean Chrétien, after he's won this election and done what Trudeau was never able to do, get back-to-back -back majority governments, is that sometime uh, during the next term he will uh, retire and yeah. uh, we will see Paul Martin as the next prime minister of this country. And we'll yeah. talk about his haircut. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think Chrétien's substance is beyond hope. And therefore, yeah. no matter what he does with his image, well, it doesn't matter. His seats will be somewhere on the other side of hope, probably, too. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. I don't think it'll be a major majority liberal government at this point. But well, we'll you know, mm. the UBC election poll, the stock market there... Which it's has not been right. For oh, why? Disagree percent. on that. But yeah. actually, the numbers for um, uh, the share value for a liberal majority has been dropping. Okay. So, we have to take a, a quick break. We'll be back after a quick break with more of your calls. We're talking about the federal election. Bit of a rant today. Tayabshi is brought to you in part by Metro, Lexus, Toyota, Victoria, and Duncan. While new sunlight two-in-one really cuts through grease, it now works on something other than dishes. Introducing sunlight two-in-one dish liquid and antibacterial hand soap. Pump top not included. We are a real nursery. We have everything that you need to do a project. Small plants, big plants, you got your trees. Lawnmowers, trimmers. We've got the seed. We've got the fertilizer, we've got the bulbs. Our products are locally grown. They come in every day, they come in from within miles of, of the store. We have certified lawn and garden experts that have done landscaping for 10 and 15 years. If you put a plant in an empty room, the room looks better. You get fresh plants, plus you'll get the lowest prices in town, and that we guarantee. These pets all have one thing in common. They're all mega pet pets. Your pet can be a mega pet pet too. The mega pet staff are knowledgeable and understand how important pets are to their owners. Our Victoria location has expanded to bring you a larger selection of the best foods for your pets and a bigger selection of pet supplies. Check out our in-store specials. Mega Pets has more items for your dog, cat, bird, small animal and fish. Make your pet a mega pet pet. Look for our mega pet at our stores in Nanaimo, Duncan and the newly expanded Victoria location. Tires Unlimited knows tires aren't always the first thing on your mind. Until you find that pothole out there with your name on it. Trust Uniroyal Tires with DuraShield construction, built for puncture resistance, long tread life, and durability. Uniroyal can take the worst the road can dish out and still keep you going. Uniroyal Tires, driving dependability home. Check them out at Tires Unlimited in Victoria. The Canadian Tire NBA Hoop It Up Trivia Contest on now. Watch Keepwell Sports Report and check 6 News at 11.30 and phone to win. First correct caller at this number wins that night's prize. Watch Check 6 Sports for more info. Talking about the federal election campaign, we'll go straight back to the calls, try to get as many as possible. And Pat in Victoria, you're on. Good morning, Judy, or good afternoon, Judy. How are you in today? Fine, thanks. Go ahead. Uh, I'd just like to make a statement here that uh, I think this is a wake-up for, call for uh, Canadians because uh, their chances are over the clock is twi uh, striking 12. And uh, if uh, Chris Shang gets back in there, 
the country is going to split. And once the country splits, this is exactly what the Americans want. Also, there's a little statement that I want to make here. Okay. Most will not change unless the pain of remaining the same is greater than the pain of change. Right. And that's factual. Okay. I think that's an excellent point. Uh, people will not be prodded out of their inertia unless there's a reason. Um, I'm going to ask you this, John, why do you think with all the issues that I list that we've done, uh, many of which stem from the federal government, why do you think there's so much inertia there right now? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting there with Gordon Wilson's policy process, you know, where, as you know well, he's doing the... the the unity three, papers, the, yes, whatever. three studies of national unity. He's getting a lot of criticism, and I think a lot of it unfair, for even just doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, the caller, I think, is bang on. People do not want to address change unless they're forced to, and hopefully through programs like this and the election debates and such, that we can get more people to realize that, yes, we have to open up to new, new possibilities because the status quo, as much as we want, is not going to stay with us. Yeah, that's why I didn't like that line of charades about the, the children and the, from his parents. I think we're not even at that stage right now. With a global economy, we can't hand that kind of world on to our kids, so yeah. let's just make it the best one possible. Anyway, let's talk to Arlene now and Lady, Lady Smith. Hi, Arlene. Hi, Judy. Hi, go ahead. Uh, it's kind of a two-part question I have. Um, I, I really can't understand why they're even allowing Quebec to, to discuss separating from Canada. Yeah, good point. To me, it sounds like treason. Right. The second part is if they should ever uh, quiet, accomplish that, separating mm -hmm. from Canada, mm -hmm. I wonder if the First Nations people shouldn't move west and will separate Alberta and British Columbia. Well... That's an interesting point, and uh, your turn, Mike. But. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's the one thing, is, is in no country is it legal to divide it. Uh, there, there is no constitution uh, set up anywhere in the world uh, which, which allows that. In fact, the United States tried it, and it led to a civil war. Well, in fact, if, uh, if uh, Quebec separates, that ends Canada as we know it. Well, and not only that, it's a situation where there are many people in Quebec who are saying, fine, if, you want, if Quebec's out, then our portion of Quebec stays in Canada. Like the Cree and if, in the north? And uh, the people who live, or who live in Hull and work for the federal government. Okay, and the people uh, in Montreal who don't want to go. Could be a very, a very uh, difficult issue, and not necessarily one that settled uh, people. Peacefully. Right. Angava. Angava, yes, the Cree part. Let's talk to John now in Vancouver. Hi, John. Are you there? Okay, then we will not talk to John, and we will talk to someone. And are you there? Line seven? No, I don't Let think so. Anyway, the uh, on this unity issue, Mike is wrong when he says that the Constitution <laughs> means that uh, you know you can't break up. I think BC's terms of union could well give us the right to secede from Canada if we find that the deal we entered into is being abrogated. Well, I think people have to understand when you're talking about the provincial. But that doesn't papers. exist with Quebec. That's my point. Per perhaps it's a with Quebec, but it's with a different BC. scenario. BC was one of the last provinces in. There yep. were certain terms of union. All of this is going to be a subject of some papers that are coming out, yep. being prepared by the provincial for the provincial government and I think it's a really important debate to have but yep. that the caller who said uh, when she said that it was illegal she's right uh -huh. but the fact that the federal government has allowed two referendum votes in Quebec has unfortunately uh -huh. created a precedent well as a sovereigntist I'm in favor of voluntary departure as long as it's dem democratically done and uh, everybody understands okay let's talk to Mike in Victoria now hi Mike hello Judy yeah go um, ahead my question is more for you. I'm curious to know who you're choosing as the front runner, seeing as how most of the politicians that are running are proven liars. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I'm still undecided uh, in the federal election. I have to say that in terms of the platforms and saying I, was, I am a, a policy nerd, I look at platforms, and nobody could have predicted I was going to say this. Two months ago, I would have killed myself before saying this. I'm leaning toward the Reform Party. <gasps> I know. I know. I can't uh, believe it. I but does your mother know? Uh, my, uh, she, now she does. <laughs> she does now. I'm going to get calls on this. But no, and that, that might not be where I stay. I don't know. Yeah. But I will tell you on the Friday, we've got a long way to go. We've got to talk about the multilateral agreement on investments, poverty we're talking about next week, health care. Yeah. Those are issues the Reform Party is not strong on. But I like parliamentary reform, and I thought that's where Preston Manning scored some points. So, Anyway, um, line seven now. Let's talk to line seven. I don't have your name, but go ahead, please. Lucky seven. Okay, is yeah, not it's not working today. Listen, guys, uh, what about you? You're both on. Now, you're traditionally from the left. Well, I am left handed. Yeah. yeah. Center left. You're sitting on I my play, far play left. I play hockey right handed. Who do, in terms of Alexa McDonough, she's made a strong showing in the yeah. debates. I think in the Maritimes that will help yeah. her out. But 
as far as the rest of the country, I mean, BC. Yeah. Well, I think I think what'll happen is Alexa McDonald will be in the House of Commons. I think they'll have at least uh, 12 MPs. I think it would be better for the country uh, for them to have uh, you know a contingent of about 20 MPs there, simply because if the numbers pan out and that we end up in a surplus budget situation, I think we need a party in there that's advocating for funds going into a job. A party creation. that knows how to spend money. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk. <laughs> Last call is George in Port Alberni. Mm -hmm. Hi, George. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to say something here. Uh, we're talking a lot about uh, Quebec separation and treason and things like that. Right. Uh, I watched the uh, political debates in the House of Parliament uh, when uh, that whole separation issue came up and we almost lost it. Right. And I can remember Preston Manning and his Republicans siding with the Bloc Québécois vote after vote on what would constitute a legal separation thing, 51, 50 plus one or not, when it looked like we were going to be losing that issue. And the mm -hmm. Allies, the Liberals, the NDP, and the Tories stood together against this onslaught from Mr. Preston Manning and his Republican viewpoints. Okay. I and, have and, to... and the other separatists yeah. in Quebec. Okay. And I'd like to know his roots from, you know, he worked and comes up here from the States after working... Okay, I've, I've got, I'm really sorry, George. I have to cut you off there because we're out of time. Nine. I know, 10 seconds. No, stop. Excellent point. Um, Excellent I will, point. I will make sure that we take a look into that before we do our show on national unity. And all I have time for is to thank you. You betcha. And thank next you. time you get to start, John. John Twig, no Mike Gagan, our political guys, guys extraordinaire on politics. Uh, tomorrow on the Rafe Mayer Show on CKNW Radio, violence and urban life and how to combat it. That's 8.30 tomorrow morning. Thank you to all of you called. Sorry we couldn't get to you all. Back after a quick break with my opinion. <laughs>Just a friendly reminder that Eggo Waffles are perfect any day of the week. Fast, delicious, Kellogg's Eggo Waffles. Any day of the week. You know where to find them. How mad do you think she's going to be? She's going to be... She's going to be fine. Get in there. He's dead. <laughs> I'll call you tomorrow. Come on, you can sleep on the couch. You don't have a couch. Let's go get some pizza. No. Let's wait for the pool table. Is it 5 sixteenths or 9 30 seconds? Standard socket or metric? What you need is Gator Grip. It's a single socket that fits any size nut or bolt, small, medium, or large. Gator Grip replaces all these sockets. The secret is these 54 spring-loaded pins. They retract to form tightly around whatever size bolt you have. Watch, this man has to change sockets with every bolt. But this man is using Gator Grip. No searching, no changing, he's done. Gator Grip is so versatile, it can tackle wing nuts, square nuts, broken nuts, and rusted nuts. This is what I used to haul around with me, but no more. Now this is all I need. Whatever the job, Gator Grip can tackle it. Why spend hundreds of dollars on all these tools? All you need is Gator Grip. Order now, and you'll also get this power adapter that turns any drill or power screwdriver into a power Gator Grip. This is one offer you won't want to miss, so get a grip. Get Gator Grip now. Since the election was called, the Liberals have been telling us that we have a very strong economy, and they're taking credit for that. But everybody I talk to says the economy is really tough right now. They're having a hard time finding a job, or they're underemployed. Things are not looking that good for most people. We're going to talk about jobs in the economy on tomorrow's show. And tomorrow we'll be joined by two more candidates who can help field your questions on this. The last caller raised a very important point, and I will commit to you that before we do our show on national unity, I will look into this. Actually, uh, Mike Gagan says he does remember that debate and some of the votes, and it's important that we allow the Reform Party to also to speak to that, but those are very disturbing allegations. 
Today we talked about how voters are feeling about this election campaign. And there's still two and a half weeks to go, but I really hope we see some more substance coming out of the leaders. We deserve better than what we're getting. The multilateral agreement on investment will affect all of us. We will do a program on that next week. And I'm telling you, you're going to be surprised when you hear what's in it. But it's time that we really took back ownership of this political campaign. I'm Judy Tayabji, and that's my opinion. What's yours?